Hello students, how are you doing? I'm good. Last time, as you know, we have sent two worksheets. Have you done those worksheets and read the given related notes? If you have done, you are on the right track. Please honest be for yourself and do the exercise and read the notes. Stop extremely worrying about the coronavirus and respect the advice and keep applying the advice and uh, washing your hands. Don't forget washing your hands and keeping your distancing. And today I'm going to give you lecturing and the corrections on some selected topics from those notes. These are prefix, future perfect tense, must, must not, have to, don't, have to, past continuous tense. These are some topics, the topics that have given uh, with those exercises. Let us start or begin with prefix. A prefix is a group of letters that added as the beginning of the word to change new word to form negative words we usually use prefixes. Let us see some prefix. Mono is a prefix. It means you can get, by the way, you can get this topic on page 39. The exercises are given. I'm going to uh, give you some examples how you can do those exercises. The answer will be given or sent through the telegram. Mono means what? It is one or single. Let us take example, monoculture. Mono is here, we can, we have used as a prefix. Mono means monoculture. What is meaning? Monoculture means one culture or single culture. Because of this prefix, these words have this meaning. Dialogue, dialogue, there is a prefix that we put at the beginning of the war. They are low. When we can segment or separate these words, we can get dia is a prefix, low is a word. Dia low. Its meaning is what? Talk or conversation that occurred between two people. That's meaning. On those exercises that are sent through this telegram, I have instructed to write the meaning of uh, the meaning of the new word that we have formed with prefix. Please don't forget, the answer will be sent the telegram. Trash is a prefix. When we add to this word three, it tends it comes from one word. That is triangle. Triangle means three angles. Let us take this picture. This is a triangle. It has three angles or three side angle. There are a lot of what? Numbers of prefix in English that can help us to form a new word. The next topic is future perfect tense. Let us see its form. The form of future perfect tense is will or will, shall, plus, half, plus, verb three. Verb three is past participle or verb three. It's uses. What is the use of this tense? It's used to express an action which is assumed or intended to, to be completed in the future by the time indicated. The time must be indicated. 
We use future perfect tense to express an action which is going to be performed in the future with expressed type by the time indicated. Let us see example. I will have joined high school next year. Okay, I know. I will have joined high school next time or next year. Next year. The underlying word is future perfect tense. And the time indicated is next year. So we use the future perfect tense with the time indication. With the time indicator. Don't forget. What does mean I will have joined high school next year? I assume, I hope that I will join high school next year. Exercise is given. I gave you exercises on that worksheet. I'm sure, let me do the first exercise and the, the next one, the rest others, the, the rest exercise will be done by yourself. I'm sure they dash in the bracket complete the new road by job. What the instruction says, complete the blank space with correct future perfect tense. So, so using the given words, we can complete the blank spaces with the correct future perfect tense. I'm sure they will have completed, they will have completed the new road by June. That's their plan. They will, they assume or intend to complete the new road by June. That's their plan. We can express that kind of action using future perfect tense. The next one is must, must not have to, don't have to. Uh, some examples of some notes are given with example. Please read it properly and try to understand more about this word. These words are in general, they are modal auxiliaries. Must and have to are used to express necessity. If something is very important to express, we have to, we can use these words. For example, must and have to use to express necessity, very important, or strong obligation. If you want to express strong obligation, some, the necessity of something, you have to, you can use what? These modal auxiliaries. These are very important. Must show obligation from speaker's point of view. I must come on time. Okay? This is my, my own point of view. Unless otherwise there is what? Something. There is punishment. Okay? Something that enforces me to do. I must come on time. Have to in this case, the speaker is not expressing feeling. Okay? There is no feeling here. Rather than she is giving or he is giving fact. When you want to express fact without feeling, you can use what? If you want to express simply, express about the fact, you can use have to. Example, children have to wear uniform. This is a fact. Okay? When they are in the school, they have to use, you have to, they have to wear uniform. Must not is the negative of what? Must. Don't have to express there is no need or obligation. If there is no obligation or need of something to do or inform us to do something or enforce us to do something, we can use don't have to. Don't have to is express there is no need or obligation to do something. Okay, these are all about the topics that I have given you last time. Please read it. Uh, I hope we will meet again. Don't give up. Don't worry. Stay at home. 
respect the advices which is transmitted from different sources, wash your hand regularly, and keep your distance, stop social interactions, because to keep yourself safe. Thank you very much. Keep on reading. I promise you again, we will send the, all the answers through the telegram. See you next time. Bye-bye.